Welcome to Curious Monica. I'm your host, Monica King, and I'm so thrilled to celebrate Black History Month. In particular, I have my friend, Gary Ware, founder and CEO of Breakthrough Play and the author of Playful Rebellion. And if you haven't caught, yes, he loves play <laughs> and creativity. You know, I'm excited because I also specialize in creativity, but I was really inspired when I first met Gary when he really like share the stage in such a playful way. I got a chance to see him live action at Epic Summit last year, and it was a really cool conference also. Shout out to that. But one of the things I really admire as I continue to study and follow Gary, also see his Instagram, super funny jokes. I'm going to ask him how he creates all that content later. <laughs> but, you know, at a time where there's such fight for content to understand what it means to be inspired, fighting mental well-being in the workplace, how to be a better leader. There are so many things I can't wait to dive in with Gary and also at a space where we don't see enough people like us. So all of that jazz, excited to have Gary. First question for you is how in the world did you fall in love with creativity and play? If you were to ask my mom, she would say <laughs> that since I could talk, I have always been creative, always been that curious being very playful and yeah, so it's been, you know, since the beginning, but focus specifically on me consciously being creative and, and doing creative things. I'd like to think that it really happened around the age of like four or five. I, again, that's oh. usually when, when kids are super curious and creative. I got in a lot of trouble, not <laughs> like, because I didn't do things, you know, to be malicious or anything like that. I was just like, Ooh, what do we do here? How do we do this? And so I was, the one that was taking things apart. And then I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> and then putting things back together. I was like, oh, what if we, what if we do this? What if we do that? And so that's where I got my start. And then I, you know, as our brains are always connecting the dots, I always ask, well, what about this? What if we did this? And I mm. think that was the catalyst for me being creative. I love that. Love that. And as you know from stats, for many of our followers who have been following creativity, we might all have started being creative, but we kind of lose it along the way. And so, Gary, I'm curious, like, what is one tip for you that continues to help hone your creativity? And if you get a chance to see some of his photos, you can already see a glimpse of playfulness. And including, you'll see him on stage, also even with Star Wars outfits. So, yeah. like, how do you get inspired? Like, how do you keep that internet? Because honestly, throughout the workplace, and I know you've worked in different organizations before you became a master facilitator, which we'll talk about too. How do you keep with it? Because it's so often. Like, I wonder, do you ever, ever even get stuck as well? I do. I get stuck a lot. And it wasn't until I started diving into this work and, and really studying, like, what does it take to be creative? Did I know, like, oh, this is a practice. This is not just something that, oh, someone just happens to be creative. And look at that. Yes, there's sort of an innate creativity, you know, that some people maybe are just out of the box or maybe a little bit more creative than others. But I learned that, Creativity is just problem solving. And so I'll answer the first question, which is if you're like, yeah, yeah, I want to be more creative and I want to, I want to keep it up. Just like when you go to the gym, if you want to get those six pack abs for the summer, you don't just do crunches one time. You, you make it a practice. Mm -hmm. And the practice of being creative is just how can we stimulate our brain? How can we challenge ourselves to create something new and novel? And so a practice that I do is uh, I don't do it daily, but I do it often is I just I get out a journal and I give myself like a random prompt, something like I. So if you're just starting this, something simple and just list it out, like, you know, what are 10 things that you can do during the summertime? Oh, all right. Go to the beach, maybe go pick flowers, something like that. And again, mm -hmm. set a timer, see how long it takes and just boom, 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 write it out. It's not about necessarily being accurate or right, but it's just getting your brain in the practice of creating a list. So now you are starting to do that. As you get a little bit more proficient in that, make it very challenging. You know, you know, what are ways that we can solve world hunger? And it's not mm. like you're going to implement some of these, but again, you are just working your brain in a low stakes environment. Again, no one even has to know about these. <laughs> you don't have to share any of these, but it's very low stakes. Whether you finish the list or not, no one's going to be harmed by this, but is getting our brains conditioned to start to think sort of outside the box. So that is a way to 
you know, stay creative. And it's something that I do. And it's, it's fun. Sometimes I re reflect and go back to these lists to see, hey, you know, this is pretty interesting. You know, maybe there's something I can do with it. But yes, I get stuck quite mm -hmm. often, you know, as a solopreneur running a, a business pretty much, you know, by myself, I get in these ruts where I, you know, I'm just like, yeah, I'm missing that. I don't know that je ne sais quoi, like just interacting with others. Yeah. And I have to remind myself, hey, reach out to someone <laughs> or, mm -hmm. you know, go back to the things that, that you love to do. So, yeah. So many reminders and insights and innovators as you're listening, I hope you caught some of the key details, right? It's really key to take a moment to break it down, make it something tangible, start somewhere where you can. But also as Gary highlighted, like find what is in your groove. Like it's okay to experiment, actually create a room and space where you could experiment. And Gary, to that point, I'm curious if we can actually go back, actually all the way back to your childhood and tell yes. me, like, who did you want it to be when you grew up? And I don't know, the early memories, I don't think I remember how I was in four or five years old. You kind of hinted, you kind of did, but I'm curious, like, how has your early part of childhood influenced?